Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to another session of CSPC virtual interview series. This time, we have the pleasure of having the Honorable Navdeep Baines, Canada's Minister of Innovation, Science and Industry, with us today and on the call. Minister Baines is a minister, is a member of parliament for the writing of uh, Mississauga Mountain, and as a minister of innovation, he made fostering economic growth through innovation a high priority for the government of Canada. He has also led series of initiatives, including the development of the government's innovation and skills plan, which aims to create new jobs and business opportunities for Canadian uh, by making this country a world leading center for innovation. Also, he has led launching of Canada's digital charter, which sets out 10 key principles to support citizens and companies in a digital world with trust and privacy at its core. Mr. Baines also spearheaded negotiations among provinces and territories that led to the Canadian Free Trade Agreement, and has also introduced a bill in Parliament that promotes the advancement of women, cultural minorities, and other underrepresented groups to the highest levels of leadership in corporate Canada. Thank you, Mr. Baines, for, uh, for being with us, and welcome to our session. Well, thank you very much uh, for having me on. Look forward to our conversation today. Thank you. I must say that CSPC has a long tradition of hosting ministers of science and innovation in the past 11 years, and we welcome you, especially since this is your first engagement with CSPC, and we look forward to having you on our various events and functions in years to come, and in particular, the 12th Canadian Science Policy Conference, which will be held virtually for the first time in November. Well, I appreciate the opportunity. Again, I want to thank the Canadian Science Policy Centre for this opportunity. Now, I've got big shoes to fill uh, following up on the hard <laughs> work and the tremendous leadership of the Honourable Kirsty Duncan. Thank you. Uh, so, I want to start off with a question about the recent funding announcements by Government of Canada in response to COVID-19 for science and innovation. Could you tell us how were these organizations, which were awarded funding, selected, and how do we hope, how do you hope to accomplish through these funding initiatives? Well, thank you for that question. And I just want to start off by saying that our government is working to support our world-class science and research community to develop treatments and the vaccine against COVID-19. That is our objective. And it's really about empowering and engaging our world-class science and research community. And we, we fundamentally recognize that science is our exit strategy from this pandemic. Um, ultimately, if we need to develop a vaccine that will protect Canadians' health, it'll allow us to return to work, to get the economy moving again, and set up Canada for a smooth rebound. So science is going to play a critical role. And that is why we developed a three-pronged plan to mobilize science that will, first of all, help us test for and track the virus. Secondly, to support the development of vaccines and therapies. Uh, that is something that is important. And, and third and lastly is to build a domestic capacity for clinical trials in biomanufacturing production. These are the three aspects of our, of our plan to mobilize science. Um, and you asked about organizations that were awarded funding. We're investing in a Genome Canada-led initiative. Uh, this is the Canadian COVID-19 Genomics Network. Uh, to sequence the virus and human host genomes to better understand the evolution of the virus and to allow us to, to better understand the impacts it would have on people. Uh, we're also investing in the uh, COVID-19 Immunity Task Force, uh, which is leading a pan-Canadian effort to understand immunity levels in the population. And again, the key is to get people back to work, and this is led by household names like uh, Dr. David Naylor, Dr. Tim Evans, and of course, our Chief Science Advisor, Dr. Mona Nimer is also involved. Uh, and I also want to acknowledge the, the Canadian Institutes of Health Research, which is funding research at hospitals and universities to help us better understand the virus and how we can treat people and make sure that we can find ways to move forward. Uh, but also, I want to underscore that we made a significant investment in a program called the Strategic Innovation Fund. We invested $792 million uh, for a COVID-19 stream to provide support to Canadian companies working on large-scale and late-stage late promising vaccine and therapy projects to help them build up domestic capacity for biomanufacturing. So 
we're looking at it from the early stage, from ideas, all the way to the manufacturing, building up that capacity here. And one example that I want to highlight that I think is important to note is a few weeks ago, uh, the first week of May, we announced a contribution of $175.6 million to support uh, Vancouver-based Abcelera's effort to develop an antibody-based therapy to treat COVID-19 and strengthen Canada's ability to respond to future pandemics. And what's so incredible about that investment is that they basically searched 6 million cells uh, from recovered COVID-19 patients and identified 500 antibodies which can then hopefully, they can find the right antibody that can block the COVID-19, which can be used for a drug treatment later on to support patients. So that's an exciting development, and those are the kind of investments we're making. Thank you, Minister. Uh, the pandemic has changed our world, and uh, I'm just wondering, do we need to set a long-term national strategy in relation to the COVID-19 epidemic and its impact in terms of, for example, our priorities in research and innovation? Um, as an example, in, uh, in terms of strategies for better collaboration and coordination among various sectors, academia, private sector, government, or the measures for better business investment in R&D, and being able to better support Canadian uh, innovation, which many believe would be crucial for the recovery phase. I would say that uh, from the very beginning of this pandemic, we have taken steps to mobilize the research community capacity within the private sector, research and development, uh, academia, and government, because we know they're our best hope. Uh, uh, effectively coordinating and optimizing the impact of these sectors is and will continue to be a key focus for myself and our entire government. Uh, we have quickly pivoted our government to respond to COVID-19. I think Canadians see that through our daily communication. And I'm proud of how Canadian researchers in particular and innovative businesses have eagerly stepped up uh, to lend their support and contribute to the government's plan. On a national scale, uh, I would say the chief science advisor has collaborated with the government of Canada's uh, different departmental science advisors, the U15 group of Canadian research universities, uh, Compute Ontario, and the University of Toronto to launch uh, an initiative called can COVID. It's a new Canada-wide network of health and science and policy researchers that are going to be there to facilitate the COVID-19 research collaboration. Uh, and back in February as well, I would highlight the federal granting agencies, along with Genome Canada, which I mentioned earlier, the Canada Research Coordinating Committee, CRCC, which we recently established, and the International Development Research Center worked together to put forward an initiative uh, called COVID-19 Rapid Response Fund to ensure that scientists had the support to quickly move forward on COVID-19 research. And this was the fastest peer review process ever conducted uh, by the Grantine Council. And I would say on the business side, there's been strong collaboration between innovation science and economic development. Uh, and the National Research Council, for example, as well as Health Canada and Public Services and Procurement have an integrated and coordinated approach to medical equipment, including personal protective equipment and vaccine discovery to scale up uh, the eventual production and retooling that's taking place. And, and that has also been very impressive to watch. We've seen over uh, 6,000 different uh, requests for ideas and proposals come forward, and over 700 of them have mobilized very quickly. But I would say looking forward, the priorities for science, uh, research and innovation set by the government of Canada could be a beneficial way to enhance national coordination and collaboration across these sectors. Uh, and with international partners as well, strengthening our innovation ecosystem and positioning Canada for a strong recovery. I'm confident that together we will continue to rapidly scale up our capacity in research and of course in manufacturing, the products that are vital to keeping Canadians safe during this pandemic. It's really about supporting not only frontline healthcare workers, but the broader Canadian public as well as we restart the economy. Okay, so what do you think this pandemic has changed with respect to the governing of the scientific enterprise? You mentioned part of it, but also with respect to the position of science in policymaking, particularly at the political level. Should we expect a fundamental shift in ensuring a more robust presence of science in policymaking? 
So that's a great question. Uh, I would say that our government has always worked to make sure that science is front and center when it comes to policy making, and the pandemic is no different. Uh, we've said from day one that we are a government that is committed to science. And I remember the one of the first things I did as a minister responsible for innovation science and economic development was to reinstate the mandatory long term census. Uh, we unmuzzled our scientists. And that's why even in, in budget 2018, we took action to support scientists by making the single largest investment in fundamental research in Canadian history. And of course, appointed Canada's first chief science advisor. Uh, and again, that uh, I want to give a lot of credit to Minister Duncan for her efforts there. But the impacts of the investments that we made in science over the past few years are coming to light during this pandemic. So we have a strong foundation and we've been able to rapidly mobilize to put additional funds in place where needed. And as I highlighted before, we're working very closely with the Chief Science Advisor, Dr. Muna Nimer. She's assembled a multidisciplinary expert panel to advise her on the latest uh, scientific developments related to COVID-19. And I believe this information will assist Dr. Nimer uh, as she provides advice on the COVID-19 response to the Prime Minister and to myself and my cabinet colleagues. Uh, we've been working closely with our colleagues at Health Canada and the Public Health Agency of Canada to ensure that we're tapping Canada's world-class uh, science and research community for the expertise and knowledge uh, and providing them with the support that they need. Uh, and I believe that it's only through the hard work of our researchers that we'll be able to come up with potential treatments and vaccines that are both effective and safe. Thank you, Minister. Uh, what do you think is Canada's position within the international efforts you mentioned in your previous answer in research and innovation to find a vaccine or cure for COVID-19? And what are we currently doing to ensure that we are well connected and part of this global endeavor? Well, we know that Canada is a global leader when it comes to science. And you've probably heard me say it before, but Canada truly is a nation of innovators. Uh, and recently, the Prime Minister announced that Canada has joined other global leaders uh, to launch a coronavirus global response to help researchers develop solutions to test, treat, protect people, and to prevent the, the further spread of COVID-19. So in today's interconnected world, the global health system relies on the strength of all regions to ensure a sustainable global recovery. Uh, and that is why we're aiming to uh, maximize global benefits from all government of Canada investments. And, and we're committed. Uh, we really are committed to helping to ensure that once a vaccine is developed, it will be produced at a scale and cost accessible to all countries. Uh, and to, again, put it in context, to date, our government has announced investment of more than $850 million. Uh, that includes support to mobilize Canadian researchers and life science companies coronavirus research and development of medical countermeasures, support accelerated vaccine development, and find a safe and effective treatment for COVID-19 uh, by working and continuing to work with the World Health Organization uh, solidarity trial. So I think that's an example that, that I want to highlight. But I would say that Canada is also well connected to the numerous international efforts in research and innovation to combat COVID-19. Uh, we must recognize that we need to all work together and Canada is contributing to this fight that we are making our contribution and that Canadian and international uh, researchers are racing to develop diagnostics, treatments and vaccines that will save lives, protect the health and safety of people uh, everywhere uh, and really lay the groundwork for a sustainable worldwide economic recovery. And, and I think that the Chief Science Advisor uh, participate in weekly calls with their international counterparts to really discuss uh, these issues in a meaningful way in the latest science um, initiatives uh, that myself and the Prime Minister, Prime Minister are engaged in. And I would just say, look, we have to recognize that the COVID-19 is a global crisis that truly requires a global response. Correct. Uh, Minister, you mentioned COVID-19 uh, initiatives. Uh, thank you for the comprehensive responses. But most non-COVID-19 research in Canada has been put on hold as a result of, you know, social distancing measures. Uh, what role is your government playing in supporting Canada's research enterprise during the pandemic to ensure we do not fall behind post-pandemic? 
So I would say that, you know, we are listening. Uh, we are listening closely to the concerns of the academic research community about the impact uh, of uh, COVID-19. Uh, we understand the importance of supporting a research community through the crisis to retain our exception, exceptional research and personnel uh, uh, network, and so that world-leading research can get ramped up quickly when social distancing measures are lifted. Uh, that is why uh, in mid-April, our government announced uh, close to $300 million to maintain income support uh, for research trainees. So these are students and postdoctoral fellows and research staff at Canadian universities funded through the federal awards and research grants. So this includes not only CIHR, but NSERF and SHRF, right? And this will help those facing economic hardships due to the pandemic-related closures and pressures. And most recently, uh, we announced $450 million to help ensure that the highly qualified personnel employed in research activities at universities and health research institutes are retained throughout the crisis. And, uh, and that the researchers are able to quickly ramp up uh, their research activities post-crisis and at the same time maintain essential activities such as animal care in, in, in the interim. So I think the three uh, federal granting agencies have introduced measures to mitigate the impact of COVID-19 focused on researchers. Uh, as I mentioned, the, Na the Natural Science and Engineering Research Council, known as NSERC, and the Canadian Institutes of Health Research have financially extended for one year their flagship grants to researchers. And so that sends a very positive signal. Uh, and I would say that all three agencies have extended uh, the grant application deadlines and financial reporting deadlines and are also covering unexpected incremental costs that researchers are incurring uh, due to travel cancellations, uh, uh, et cetera, born from this crisis. So I would say those are very positive developments. And I'd also like to highlight uh, as well the Canada Foundation for Innovation, which is continuing to provide salary support for personnel, uh, research personnel involved in the operation and maintenance of uh, CFI funded infrastructure. And that's important. Even while labs are shuttered due to this crisis, uh, we believe that this will help sustain the academic research enterprise during this crisis so that post-secondary institutions are well positioned to contribute to Canada's post-COVID economic recovery. Uh, and I would just underscore again that, you know, we're, we're listening and we'll continue to engage the research community, more broadly speaking. And all the investments that I've highlighted total to over $2 billion worth of investments we've made in the past few months as we're dealing with this crisis to support our researchers, our scientists, to empower them, to, to encourage them, uh, because their ideas and their solutions will have a tremendously positive impact both in the short term and long term in terms of our ability to find solutions uh, to the COVID-19 crisis, but also for the economic recovery. Thank you, Minister. As, and as my final question, I'm referring to that listening. And I want to ask you, uh, as a minister, you, uh, if you were in contact with members of science and innovation community during this pandemic because of the, you know, due to restrictions, social distancing, and if you were in touch with them, what are you hearing from them? Uh, I would say that I've been very fortunate to be in this position where I speak to many researchers and scientists uh, but I would say this morning was a special moment for me where I had an opportunity to speak with uh, Dr. Art McDonald, our Nobel laureate, and he and I were talking about not only his scientific work, but also the fact that he stepped up in a big way uh, and worked with other researchers and now working with manufacturers to build ventilators based on off-the-shelf parts. Uh, that's not only going to help Canadians, but many other jurisdictions. Uh, as well, and I think in many other countries as well. And I think that's an example of uh, our science, uh, our scientists being mobilized and being part of the solutions that are going to really save lives and have a profound impact. And uh, for me, that was a special moment to speak with someone with his caliber, with his experience, with his track record, uh, and someone who is so committed uh, to the broader Canadian uh, initiative. Uh, of, of fighting this healthcare crisis and also understanding that we have to deal with economic crisis as well. Um, but him stepping up and taking a leadership role in coming forward with a solution that will really help Canadians and frontline healthcare workers. Thank you, Minister. If you have any final message for the community that you want to share with them. Um, 
I would say thanks. Thanks for stepping up. Uh, thank you for your ideas, your suggestions, your leadership. Uh, we're here for you. Uh, we know how important science is. Our government fundamentally believes in science. As I said, uh, we as a government uh, made the single largest investment in fundamental research in Canadian history. Uh, and we need you. We need you now more than ever uh, because we're dealing with this unprecedented healthcare crisis. Um, and I'm just so proud of the fact that we have some of the best scientists and researchers in the world. And we look forward to continue to work with you, continue to listen to you and engage you uh, as we move forward uh, through this crisis. Thank you, Minister Bain. I want to thank you for your mm -hmm. time and being with us and look forward to having you at the annual conference and other sessions. And best of luck uh, with your work and uh, your commitment. Well, thank you very much for this opportunity. Look forward to hopefully seeing you sooner rather than later. Same here. Thank you.